See none, then let us begin our worship with our prelude. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. For all those who have paved the way for our freedom of worship, we give thanks, O Lord. For those who have taught us about witness and the power of love, we give thanks, O Lord. For those who work in our church, that we may come to know what it means to serve, we give thanks, O Lord. Praise be to God, who continually inspires and guides workers and witnesses. Open our hearts and spirits, O Lord, and help us to become good workers for you. Let us pray. God of peace, you taught us that in returning and rest we shall be saved, and quietness and confidence shall be our strength. By the power of your Spirit, lift us to your presence, where we may be still and know that you are God. We pray in the name of Jesus, our Savior and salvation. Amen. Please rise as you are able and join in our opening hymn, hymn number 275, A Mighty Fortress is Our God.
Dear friends, God invites us into closer relationship each and every day. And if we are honest, we know how many times we ignore that invitation. Together, let us pray our prayer of confession. God of mercy, forgive us when we make excuses for our lack of faith. We let our selfishness and apathy get in the way of illumination and peace. Remind us that you have been present to us, whether or not we knew it. Your love is always surrounding us, yet we have not taken the time to recognize it. Open our hearts with your forgiving spirits, that we may be witnesses to your love and compassion. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear friends, you have always been loved by God. Rejoice, for God is with you and forgives you. Serve God in all that you say, think, and do. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy God, may your grace shine upon us as we hear your words. May they inspire us to share your message with the world. Amen. The first lesson comes from the book of Psalms, chapter 32, verses 1 through 7. Happy are those whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Happy are those to whom the Lord imputes no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. While I kept silence, my body wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not hide my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let all who are faithful offer prayer to you, at a time of distress, the rush of mighty waters shall not reach them. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with glad cries of deliverance. Here ends the reading. The second lesson comes from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. Rid yourselves, therefore, of all malice and all guile, insincerity, envy, and all slander. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good, come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices 
acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, see I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. Then to you then who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of God's holy words. On this day, the day that we celebrate Martin Luther nailing the 95 theses next to the church in just fell out of my head. I've only been there three times. Wittenberg. I'm not getting old. <laughs> and also the day when we celebrate the heritage of this congregation founded in 1675 and the day that we honor our 50 year and longer members I think first Peter says it the best let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood this congregation and more importantly, the members of this congregation have done that indeed for over 300 years. We are an example of faith and trust and perseverance and also a place of joy and sadness and hope and a place where we can turn, whether it's the best day of our lives or the worst. This Sunday, instead of a, 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 a sermon from me, I am grateful to our historian, Suzanne Muller, who can't be with us because she's still recovering from surgery, that she came, put together a snapshot of a minister's wife in the revolution. This is written by the Reverend Dr. Roderick Terry, but Suzanne also put all of the different pieces together. We are all familiar with our pastor, Azel Rowe. He was the pastor of this church for his entire ministry from 1763 Till his death in 1815, 52 years, our longest serving pastor. Reverend Rowe is buried in our cemetery with his two wives, first Rebecca Foot Rowe, and upon her death, Hannah Bostwick Rowe. Two of his eight children are also buried here, Fanny and Lucia. Reverend Azel Rowe is particularly memorable because he was our pastor during the Revolutionary War. Like many Presbyterian ministers of the time, he was in favor of independence. Azel Rowe was an ardent patriot. His sermons, words, and deeds 
inspiring his congregation, but getting him in trouble with the British and with his loyalist neighbors. But what about his wife during this time? Rebecca Foot Rowe, what was she going through? One of Azel's and Rebecca's descendants, Reverend Dr. Roderick Terry, wrote a minister's wife in the revolution. He used family stories and history as input to honor his ancestor. As a note, Rev. Dr. Terry is also the author of the bronze plaque that is beside Azel Rose's portrait as we enter the church, which was given to the church by Azel and Rebecca's descendants in 1898. The following is from his story. Rebre Rebecca was from Branford, Connecticut. Rebecca's father, Major Isaac Foote, was away from home fighting in the French and Indian War. In a letter from her father to her mother when Rebecca was 16, he wrote, I should choose that she does not keep any company these two or three years. But if she should marry, do all that lies in your power and take special care that she marries into a religious family and if possible to a religious partner. Rebecca did just that, marrying Azel Rowe. In September 1763, Rebecca, now 24, moved into the parsonage with her husband. Twelve years later, in 1775, Rebecca and Azel have two sons and two daughters, and the time of the revolution is at hand. Wednesday, the 23rd of April, 1775, the town is stirred to its depths by the news just received at the hands of a mounted courier who has torn through the streets on his way to Philadelphia, that the first patriot, patriot blood has been shed upon the green at Lexington, Massachusetts. The village is thronged. The words of the pastor proclaiming the right of freedom are eagerly passed from mouth to mouth. But as he, and in his zeal, goes about his parishioners, kindling in their bosoms some of his enthusiasm. The wife sits at home with her children, about her realizing that all this excitement means war and suffering and death. Within three months, the evidence of war appears in the village. The Rose have another baby, the mother anxiously watched from her window the passing and repassing of the young men preparing, for, preparing themselves for the conflict. In 1776, Woodbridge suffered the British and Hessians taking horses, cattle, sheep, setting fire to buildings, camping in the town. Rebecca and Azel now have six children, the youngest only one year old. Rebecca witnessed all of this. Meanwhile, her husband, true to his country and to God, Sunday after Sunday, thundered forth from his pulpit the most bitter denunciations of the enemy. Although warned repeatedly of the danger which he thus brought upon himself, nothing could restrain his fiery ardor. We can imagine the shuddering and fear of this delicate woman, both for her husband and herself and for her children, as she heard these strong speeches uttered from the pulpit and was told again and again by her neighbors 
that the feeling against her husband was getting continually more bitter. That not only the British, but their own neighbors, who had taken the side of the British, were constantly threatening that unless his mouth was stopped by his own caution, they would take measures to do so by force. The British made several attempts to capture Reverend Rowe, invading and searching the house in the middle of the night, as the father was hiding in the neighboring woods. An English officer was entertaining the terrified wife in the parlor, and with graceful phrases was assuring her that the, that the English made no war upon defenseless women and children that their only desire was to capture her husband. But even while speaking these polite phrases, his men were driving off all of their stock. At last, the British succeeded in capturing Reverend Rowe. When challenged, the British supposedly said, he is the most bitter enemy about here. We hate him as we hate the devil, and we must stop his mouth. Reverend Rowe was confined to the Sugar House Prison in New York until his release in a prisoner exchange. Shortly after his imprisonment, Rebecca bore another child. She now had the care of seven children, ages infant to 14. Before the end of the war, another child was born. Also, Rebecca witnessed a small battle which took place within sight of the parsonage. She saw dead and wounded and dying, many of whom were her neighbors and parishioners of her husband. After the war, Azel and Rebecca and their eight children enjoyed 10 years of rest and contentment. Then Rebecca passed away to be buried in the little graveyard behind her husband's church. This one story of our history is one of just many. We could take pages from any number and hear of faith, and of sacrifice, of trust, and of community. That is what makes a faith community flourish and be a force in this world and in its community. This congregation and all of us as the heirs of all who have gone before are part of the story. May we always continue to do our part. Amen. I invite all who are, all who are able to rise as we affirm our faith as we say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join in our next hymn, number 438, Rock of Ages, cleft for me.
please be seated. And now I call forward Bob Steffen, who will lead in, in the honoring of our 50-year members. All right. Oh, is this working? Wait a minute. There we go. OK. Um, I am not Marilyn. Marilyn has her frog voice, her annual frog voice today, so she asked me to stand in for her. So, and, and what I, the one thing I did realize as I'm doing this, it, it is something of a special day. Um, I'm going to call on the three new members first, and, and I realize they were in my Sunday school class, so. <laughs> I am honoring my Sunday school class. So, three new members this year are Dan Barony, Nancy Deverin, or Nancy Roeder, depending on how you know Nancy. Come on, no, come on up, come on up. And Margaret Willoughby, Margaret Wyatt Willoughby. So yes, so this was, uh, they were my first, one of, one of my first Sunday school classes, and uh, yeah, you're for, yeah, I, there were some questions Danny asked that I never answered and will never answer. <laughs> so, I want to welcome you all to this esteemed group. It is, uh, well, there are many of us, but there are some, so it's really nice, and it's good to see you all, and it's good to see all of you, we'll go through the names, but I said, and we have a little pin for you. Well, see, I put my pin on. I wore my pin today. There's you, and one for you. So welcome to the group, and we hope to see you for many, many more years. No, no, I'm not going to answer it, no. And many, many more years. So you can sit down. Go ahead. It is tough when you grew up with something, and then you realize, wait a minute, the class, I'm, yeah, that's my Sunday school class, that's not good. Yeah, the first, it, was my, it was my first class, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah a long time ago. Okay, um, so I'm going to go through the names. If uh, you're there, if you feel able, stand up. If not, raise your hand, so if you can't feel up. But there are a number of, uh, our 50-year members are here, and again, this is sort of an esteemed group. You have to have been, well, you have to have been here a long time to be a 50-year member, that makes sense. Okay, uh, Nancy Teal, uh, who isn't here today, probably at a football game with her grandchildren who are cheering or playing or doing whatever. Nora Stewart. I, you're in the choir. I didn't see you. Good to see you. Where else would she be? Well, you know, Nora, so Nora moved to a new place six months ago, a year ago? When did you move? A year ago. A year ago. And so I uh, haven't seen her in a while. It's good to see you. You didn't miss me, did you? Yeah, yes, I did. <laughs> no, I did. You, food pants, especially. Yes. OK, Jean Brown. I don't know if Jean made it today. Oh, she did. Hello, Jean. Good to see you. Uh, Janice couldn't make it. Janice Tamari couldn't make it. But her daughter and grandchild are here. Uh, Kathleen Sosnovich, she's over there. <laughs> you, yep, quick up and down. Pat Sofka could not make it. Um, something about a family birthday party in Pennsylvania. I don't know how that could be more important than being here, but family does come first. So yes, uh, Robert Perron, haven't heard from Robert or Mary Tappan. Did hear from Edith Sahada. Hello, Edith. She said she'd be watching. So hello, Edith. Good to see you. Good to see you. are watching. Said she couldn't make it. Uh, Patricia Ederman couldn't make it. She's in California. And said, no, she wasn't going to be in New Jersey around now, so she wasn't making a special trip out. And then, of course, we went into the two Barony boys, Matt Barony and Charlie Barony. You can stand up. No, okay, all right. Tom Walsh in the back there. Tom Walsh. Amy, I didn't think Amy Salvatore made it, uh, or Margaret Quinn, or Leslie Kalita. Didn't, didn't think they had made it. Cheryl Abatiello, however, is here with her family in the back. And Lodgy, I don't think he made it. Nick is in a, he's just being in her home. So he's, he's busy. Oh, oh, Robert Steffen, that's me. <laughs> this is a good group. Linda Marisevich isn't here, but we have. I mean, Goodrich, Janet and Frida, 
And Roy Axelson, Roy made it. Good for you, Roy. Uh, we didn't hear from Van Bramer. We did hear from Al and Margaret Treziak. They weren't going to be able to make it today. But Al, they did send us a note saying uh, they, weren't, they just weren't going to be able to make it. But uh, they were glad and always glad to hear from us. Mr. Fails, Bob Fails. And again, we hadn't heard from John, um, but we did Betsy. Betsy McQuinn is here. Oh, just raise your hand, so I know who you are. There you go. Todd Howell. Remember our members? Stuart Brando, over in the back. And, and I will say, you're all invited next door after this for the reception, and when you get to, there is a video, and when you get to Stu's picture, there, are some, there is a picture from a little while ago. Something to look forward to. Uh, again, Margaret wasn't going to be able to make it. Fred and Eileen, Clayton. Jim Ellick. I didn't see Jim today. He's probably in Florida. Florida today? It's cold. He went to Florida. Uh, Nancy Dunham was going to be here, and then she said, I can't make it. She got COVID. So, Nancy, if you're watching, I hope you're feeling better. Uh, Audrey, I didn't see you. No? But uh, Audrey is one of those, if, if we've ever done this to anybody, let me know. Audrey was a member of the church for a while. She left for a couple of years. Then she came back. Point, you know, I'm a 50-year member. I said, no, you're not. You joined like in whatever it was, 80, 70, it was. But she said, oh, no, I was a member before that. And sure enough, we had a year she had been here. There was a gap. And then she had the years she was here now, and she was a 50-year member. So if we've done that to anybody where you had a gap in your membership, but you had them all together and you have 50 years, let us know. And finally, our, our number one member, Mr. Fred, I, my boss, my boss, my mentor, who shows me how to fix things around here, Mr. Fred Iverson in the back. <laughs> now I had to write this one down. Uh, three members this year. We've, we've lost three members this year from the 50-year group. In April, my mother passed away, Bree Stephan. She passed away. And one of the things that, as I started looking at those who passed, I actually asked Marilyn if I could do this part even before she got her frog throat. Because I wanted to talk about that. She was a member of the Guild, PW, Sunday school teacher, and elder, and clerk of session pantry. In September, we lost Bill Baylog. I said, many know, my thing, many know Bill is the fire department, and that's what he's known for. However, here, he was scoutmaster, Sunday school superintendent for a number of years, and an elder. He served his church. And then finally, just a couple of weeks ago, and this is probably what triggered it for me, Don Whitaker passed away. And Don didn't want a memorial, didn't want anything. And I said, that's Don, that's not right. Um, you need to say something. So I'd ask Marilyn, could I say something here for Don? He was a teacher and principal in the school district, for those who knew him there. Here, he was a Sunday school teacher. Uh, in fact, he had been, it would have been he, was, he was my Sunday school teacher way back when. He was an elder. And he was a clerk of session. And if you like the way the communion table looks or the church is decorated, you can thank Don and his sister, Jean Griesheimer, who passed away a number of years ago. They were the ones who taught us how to do this. So, and, and one of the things I wanted to point out on all three, there were, were three members. There were also three people who served the church. And one of the things that helps our congregation survive, grow, and be the, are the people who have served this church for many years. And my mother, Bill, you know, can't remember, Bill and Don were three of the people who have served this church for many years. And in some, a lot of ways, I don't know what's good or bad, made me who I am. Uh, obviously my mother, but then, you know, both Don and Bill they were both through church. I mean, I, Sunday school teachers, they helped me grow. And that's what's important when we think about the 50-year members, when we say at least, maybe it's because I'm getting older too. But as we go through this, it's, it's the, the contribution they've made to this congregation, and not just to the building, but to all the people that have passed through these, these doors, have passed through this, this congregation. Uh, whether it was Sunday school, scouts, youth groups, uh, working on session, being a leader in uh, worship, or 
music or whatever. That's what it really does. So when we recognize those people, uh, that's what we need to be thinking about. And I just want to wish you well. The reason I asked to do this, I wanted to say thank you to them this year. Uh, it was something for me. So thank you all for coming. Thank you all. So thank you to all of them. Thank you, Bob. And thank you, Marilyn, for organizing all of this. And please remember, there is a special reception next door after worship. We have now come to the time in our service where I invite you to share your joys, your concerns, your reasons to give thanks. Yes, Linda. Sounds great, Linda. I'm a bad pastor. I never think of photo opportunities. So thank you for, for doing that. Yes. So your neighbor, Ralph, his mother-in-law is in the hospital. Great. Thank you. Yes, Kathy. Thank you, Kathy. Are the, yes, Bob. Thank you. So Holly. Ho ah, yes. Has has a broken leg and will be laid up, and we're hoping it she won't need surgery. Margaret. So last week I asked for prayers for Heather Wish's mother, Barbara. She was supposed to have um, surgery on Friday, and that was canceled. Uh, there were some complications. So would you please keep praying until they figure out when they can do the first surgery and the second surgery, and just support them, please. Thank you. Margaret asks for prayers for Barbara, who was supposed to have surgery last week, but it got canceled, and for the rescheduling, and the two surgeries, and for the whole situation. Any others? Then with, then with all that is on our hearts and our minds, let us turn to God in prayer, first with the silent prayers of our hearts. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you for the ways in which we see your love and care and guidance for us and for this congregation through the years. Remind us when things get complicated or hard or when we are so busy we don't know which end is up. Remind us that your love is eternal, that your love has carried so many through every day of their lives, and your love will do the same to us and our children. Remind us that you are always there for us that you are the one in whom knows all of our feelings. 
and we thank you. Holy God, on this day, we pray for all of those people who grieve and mourn. We ask that they know your peace. We pray with all of those people who celebrate and rejoice on this day, knowing that their celebrations are sweeter with your presence. We pray for all of those people who are ill, in body, mind, or spirit. We ask that your healing presence be with them and that your guidance be with all who care for them. We pray, Holy God, for all of those people who wrestle with questions that loom so large and answers that feel so small. We ask that they know your hope. We pray for all of those people who freely give of themselves in so many different ways so that we may lead our blessed lives. We ask that you keep them safe. And always, holy God, we pray that there would be an end to violent and war and hatred, and that your peace and your justice and your mercy would come to all corners of our world. Lead us and guide us, holy God, to be your faithful people here and now, continuing the legacy of faith and trust in you. We pray this prayer and all prayers in the name of the one who, set, who you sent for us, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. With thanksgiving in our hearts, let us return to God a portion of the bounty that God provided us. The ushers may now come forward.
Let us pray. God of many blessings, may the offering we bring before you now be a sign of our commitment to live your vision and to share your generosity with our world. Come to us, abide in our homes, and work within these offerings, that all may know your grace and salvation. Amen. Please join in our closing hymn, hymn number 643, Now Thank We All Our God. Thank you. 